The Cyton is Mercedes' idea of what a compact van should be. An LCV that's more than just practical and efficient to run, but one with a depth of engineering and a sheen of quality that make the right statement about your business. Potentially then the ideal recipe for a small company with big aspirations. Mercedes has never offered us a really compact van, and that's been a problem for this German maker, given that small LCVs account for nearly half of the total commercial vehicle market. Now the Mark has put that right with this model, the Cyton. There's a good reason, of course, why it's taken the Stuttgart brand so long to enter this segment. It knew buyers would expect the Mercedes of small vans to be something very special which would in turn necessitate an asking price beyond what most of them would be prepared to pay. Of course, the company could merely apply its famous badge to someone else's LCV and cheapen the price that way, but then the result wouldn't be a real Mercedes, would it? What to do? After a lot of head scratching in Stuttgart, a compromise solution was reached. A partnership agreement with Renault would be signed, which would allow Mercedes to base its new small van on the French brand's well-respected Kangoo model. But then, rather than badges simply being swapped, that vehicle would be taken apart and redesigned the Mercedes way to ride, handle and feel like a vehicle fit to wear the three-pointed star. Hence, this Cyton's unique suspension, steering, gearbox and cabin. It's got its own look too, and it's the only model in this segment to come with the choice of no fewer than three different body lengths. Of course, there's a small premium to pay for all of this over the cost of a more ordinary compact LCV. But then savvy buyers in this sector realize that they'll get what they don't pay for. Find the cash for a Cyton and you just know you'll get a professional job. But just how professional? Let's put this vehicle to the test. This van may be based on quite a number of Renault underpinnings, but with a three-pointed star on the grille up front, it needed to ride and drive like a Mercedes. Rather to my surprise, I found that it does. In fact, its on-the-road demeanour is so different from that of its Kangoo design stablemate that it's difficult to believe the two models are in any way related at all. The ride, steering and gear shift quality in the Renault are all soft and vague. You only need to drive a Cyton a few yards down the road to realise that here things are very different. Let's start with the ride. Firm, but not unpleasantly so, thanks to changes made to the damping and stabiliser bars getting rid of the rather wallowy feeling you get in a Kangoo. You could actually imagine quite enjoying punting this vehicle through a few of your favourite back row bends once you dropped off your load, although doubtless it would be a little less effervescent when loaded up to its payload weight. The preciseness of the Mercedes direct steering setup helps here too, responding in a way that's a world apart from the sort of high effort gritty feel you come to expect in a small van. Instead, it delivers supple, polished feedback that's really not too far off the kind of thing that you get in a Mercedes A-Class, offering low effort when manoeuvring and a bit of reassuring heft at higher speeds. The turning circle is decently tight, rated at 12.2 metres, or as little as 10.1 metres for the short wheelbase compact model, like the one I'm trying here. One of the things that's impressed me about this vehicle is the way it's so impervious to side winds and the way that heavy loads don't seem to unduly unsettle it. All round visibility is good thanks to the curved A pillars and I've also put a tick in my tester's notebook next to the entry marked mirrors. Those provided here are big and clear and help take the guesswork out of reversing with their convex inserts, though I think I'd still opt to pay the extra for the optional reversing sensors. Braking feels assured, though a compact variant like the one I'm driving here doesn't get discs fitted all round in the way that the longer body styles do. Talking of braking, there's a useful start off assist feature that, if you're setting off on an incline, maintains brake pressure for several seconds after you've taken your foot off the brake pedal to stop you from momentarily rolling backwards as you pull away. 
drive is directed to the front wheels, whichever model you choose. And though there was no auto transmission option offered at launch, such is the crisp, clean shift action of the manual gearbox, that's no great hardship. You'll like the high mounted stubby lever too, which falls perfectly to hand. It's a pity though that you have to stretch up to the pokiest 110 brake horsepower 111 CDI model to get this stick with six speeds. That top diesel variant uses the same Renault derived four cylinder CDI diesel you'll find further down the range. In 75 brake horsepower, guys in the entry level 108 CDI Cyton, and as here in 90 brake horsepower form in the volume 109 CDI model. If you're looking at towing, obviously the two faster diesel units will be better choices, respectively developing 200 and 240 newton meters of torque. Though right across the range, Mercedes quotes the same 1,050 kilogram brake trailer weight. Not ideal for towing is the minority interest Cyton 112 petrol variant fitted with a 114 brake horsepower, 1.2 liter turbo petrol unit and a six speed manual gearbox. This Cyton may be the smallest fan ever to wear a three-pointed star, but it's still a confident looking thing and aesthetically very much more than just a badge engineered Renault Kangoo. Indeed, the front end could only be from a Mercedes, a V-shaped bonnet flowing into big, powerful, clear glass headlamps flanking a large arrow-shaped grille with a prominently displayed chrome-plated star in its center. Below, a trapezoidally shaped air intake in the bumper emphasizes width and adds an extra dose of attitude. It's all a long way from the usual rather apologetic school of compact van design. Here, your sense is a vehicle that wants to assert itself. The rear end is distinct too, with cleanly defined one-piece tail lights under clear red glass that feature a pattern of bright and matte chrome-plated lines. Ultimately, this is all about Mercedes trying to impose its personality on this vehicle. But at the end of the day, it can't fully disguise the fact that the chassis, underpinnings and engine wear are all Renault derived, as is the basic design. Something you notice most readily from a side profile view that might leave you struggling to tell a Cyton and a Kangoo apart, thanks to the familiar wedgy shape and prominent side rubbing strips. Actually, this isn't the first time Renault's Kangoo has been used as a base for someone else's small van. Students of small LCV history may remember Nissan's old Kubistar trying the same trick a few years back. But while that was simply a badge swapping exercise, the Cyton claims to represent a different, far more thorough approach. Something Mercedes hopes you'll especially notice when taking a seat inside. To be honest, I never thought there was much wrong with a Kangoo's cabin until I took a seat in this one. The Stuttgart engineers clearly didn't think much of Renault's efforts for they've taken the whole thing apart and started again. The convenient dash mounted gear stick and peculiar L-shaped handbrake lever being the only remaining commonalities between the two models. Now, the Cyton gets a purpose design dashboard that wraps around the driver and is surfaced in an attractive leather-like grain. The chunky three-spoke wheel is bespoke too, though it's a pity it only adjusts up and down and not in and out. Through it, you view a clear set of typically Mercedes-style, precisely drawn instruments featuring a trip computer with fuel consumption, range, time, servicing and temperature readouts. It's all neat, functional and beautifully presented, and a lot of effort has gone into making it so. The brand has its own distinct design standards for dials, buttons and switches covering everything from lettering font size to ease of use and minimum allowable panel corner radius. Now all this may be fastidious but the end result it creates has a distinct feel of three-pointed star. The German maker has even redesigned the column stalk layout to incorporate its trademark overloaded single stalk that operates everything from indicators to wipers. True, there's nothing very aesthetically pleasing here, but there's an overriding air of ruggedness. 
and quality that makes it difficult to believe that this van runs along the same French production line as its Renault design stablemate. The firm well-shaped seats are good too, a crucial consideration in any commercial vehicle, with that for the driver being height adjustable. The form-fitting curve of the backrests in particular provides decent lateral support with trimming in Lima black fabric material that's breathable, durable and easy to care for. Even chocolate lifts off it fairly easily with a damp cloth. Talking of seats, you might wonder whether this vehicle can be specified with the kind of optional three-person front bench that some rivals offer. This Mercedes was launched with the brand talking of that feature being under development. So if it's something that interests you, then have a chat with your dealer. Of course, if the transport of people rather than packages is a key consideration for you, then the sight and range can certainly oblige, either with a dual liner model offering a fold out three person rear bench and partly glazed sides, or a fully glazed travel liner variant with a conventional five seater passenger car arrangement. Finally, I should say a word or two about cabin practicality. Here I've got the optional fold forward front passenger seat, which along with the folding low protector grill that you can specify in place of the standard fixed bulkhead can increase the length of items you can carry in the cargo bay by around 750 millimeters. With the seat folded flat, it's also useful for the carriage of boxes in the cab. Now, smaller items can be swallowed by the large glove box, and uh, there are decently sized bins in both of the doors. Plus, there's an overhead storage area that I'd urge you not to use for heavier items unless you want to open up the possibility of being clonked on the head next time you do an emergency stop. Uh, cup holders, well, there's one at the bottom of the dashboard, which is rather difficult to get to when the handbrakes push forward, and another a little further back. I'd also want to specify the deep lidded bin that can be positioned between the front seats. List pricing suggests that, excluding the dreaded VAT, most site and customers will be paying somewhere in the 13 to 16 and a half thousand pound bracket across a wide range of different variants. As a customer, your main decisions will be based around three main issues body length, engine, and the question of whether there's any need for rear compartment seating. Now, let's start with the first of those. Though unlike some rivals, this Mercedes doesn't offer an option on roof height, even the brand's much bigger Vito van doesn't give you that, there is the usual selection of body lengths. In this case, the three-way choice of compact, that's the version that I have here, long and extra long. This compact derivative is aimed at the smallest purpose-designed van segment, think uh, Peugeot Bipper or Citroen Nemo, with the two long sight and body styles aimed at bigger, more mainstream compact vans like Citroen's Berlingo and Ford's Transit Connect. Now, in deciding upon the length you want, if you budget on a premium of between three to 400 pounds to go from compact to long, and the same kind of amount to go from long to extra long, then you won't go too far wrong. Now you need to get this decision right, for of course the body style you select will determine the payload you'll be able to carry. In a compact model, that'll be limited to 490 kilograms, but you can increase that to a figure anywhere between 590 and 775 kilograms in the long variant, depending on the engine you choose. Finally, an extra long Siton can take anywhere between 795 and 810 kilograms. Engines next. Almost all buyers will want a diesel, so Mercedes offers a selection of three, all 1.5 litre Renault derived units, uh, giving the choice between 75 brake horsepower in the Siton 108 CDI, 90 brake horsepower in the Siton 109 CDI, and 110 brake horsepower in the Siton 111 CDI. Now, whichever you choose, it's probably worth finding a premium of around £250 to get your vehicle specified in more frugal blue efficiency form, which will mean it'll come with stop-start and other eco-minded measures. 
this package really ought to come as standard, as it does if you go for the lineup single petrol engine variant, the 114 brake horsepower, 1.2 litre turbocharged Cyton 112, offered only in the long body style. Mercedes is aiming this version at companies like town centre florists and bakers who'll cover short trips and won't really care about its reduced 630 kilogram payload capacity. So let's say you've sorted out your ideal Cyton model's body length and engine choice. That only leaves the question of rear cargo compartment seating and whether there's a need for it. Now, don't dismiss this issue out of hand. OK, so you're watching this because you're shopping for a van. But wouldn't it be occasionally useful if that van could carry four or even five people around when you weren't using all the space in its cargo bay? If your answer to that question is yes, and like many customers, you're considering the volume 90 brake horsepower 109 CDI variant with the extra long body style, then it may be worth finding the premium of around 800 pounds. Mercedes asks to get yourself the so-called dual liner version that includes a useful fold out rear seat and partial rear side glazing. Of course, that won't really work if you're going to be uh, taking people around more regularly. For that kind of need, Mercedes offers a fully glazed five-seater travel liner model, essentially a small people carrier, and good value at that for a VAT exclusive budget of around £16,000 if your business can reclaim the Chancellor's 20% pound of flesh. Travel liner models are based on the middle range long body style and offered in either 108 or 109 CDI guises. So in other words, with either the 75 or the 90 brake horsepower engine. Most buyers of this vehicle though will simply be searching for the most practical, spacious and value priced compact van in what they'll know is a tightly fought market segment. So, how do mainstream versions of this Cyton match up against direct rivals in this sector? Or should I say sectors? There are, after all, two separate ones being targeted here. In the compact guise on offer in this case, Mercedes is, as I mentioned earlier, targeting the smallest of the purpose-designed van segments, popularised by vehicles like the Citroen Nemo, the Peugeot Bipper and the Ford Courier. It can't match the very cheapest versions of these LCVs on price, but if you were looking for an upper spec version of one of them, then the Cyton could offer a different and slightly more prestigious option for your business. Get yourself this Mercedes in long or extra long guises though, and it goes head to head with the mainstream players in the compact van market. As well as this vehicle's sister design, the Renault Kangoo. These primarily include the Ford Transit Connect, the Volkswagen Caddy, the uh, Citroen Berlingo Peugeot Partner model, and the vehicle the industry knows as either a Vauxhall Combo or a Fiat Doblo Cargo. Can a Mercedes really directly compete with established contenders such as these on price? An initial glance at a glossy three pointed star price list rather surprisingly, suggests the answer to be yes, until you realise that the lowest figures quoted are actually for the cheapest, littlest, compact shaped Cyton models. Vehicles like the one I have here that actually compete in the much smaller Nemo Bipper Courier segment that I mentioned earlier. No, you'll need to get this Mercedes in one of its long body styles if you're to properly compare apples with apples in your search for a really spacious compact van. A long or extra long Cyton of that sort will cost you on average around seven to eight hundred pounds more than an identically powered and sized version of its Renault Kangoo design stablemate. And in wider segment terms, you're looking at a premium to own this Mercedes model of anything between £500 and £1,200 of a most directly comparable sector rivals, depending on what you're looking at. In return, you get for that a nicer cabin, a sharper driving experience and a better image for your business. Add to that higher residual values and the fact that the better equipped Mercedes includes the kind of second sliding side door most rivals make you pay extra for, and I can see a significant number of potential customers being tempted by the Cyton proposition. 
If you find yourself to be one of them, you'll be wanting your vehicle to be specified to a standard that doesn't require you to necessarily take an expensive trip through the options list. Which is why, even on base trimmed variants of this van, Mercedes includes things like daytime running lights, cruise control with a speed limiter, overhead cab storage, a trip computer, an MP3 compatible stereo, Bluetooth for your mobile phone, and a start off assist feature that stops you from rolling backwards as you pull away from rest on an incline. As I just mentioned, the two longer versions get the welcome bonus of two sliding side doors rather than just a single one. This in addition to more expected items like a full height bulkhead, an immobiliser, electric mirrors and remote central locking. As for options, well you might want a tow bar and it could be worth looking at features like the rear ladder flap that lets you poke really long items out of the end of the roof. Or, on the long models, you could opt to put such items in a roof cargo basket. Before getting into all of this though, make sure you've enough in your budget for what I'd say are the two most important optional features. The foldable front passenger seat and the folding load protector grille that you can specify in place of the standard fixed bulkhead. These usefully increase the potential length of items you can carry. On the long variants, these items come already included as part of an optional cargo pack. Other optional packs include one for appearance, which smartens up the look of the van and adds alloy wheels, and a driver's pack, which adds air conditioning where not already fitted, plus niceties like parking sensors and power folding mirrors. There's a safety pack too, which for around £500 includes front fog lamps and properly completes your airbag tally. For, a little disappointingly, only a single airbag in the steering wheel is standard. One reason perhaps why this vehicle scored only three stars in Euro NCAT testing. With this pack you also get a side airbag for the driver, plus front and side airbags for the front passenger. Standard safety kit includes an adaptive electronic stability control system clever enough to adapt its functionality to the weight of the load you're carrying. And there are hazard warning lights that automatically ag activate when you stamp on the anti-lock brakes so that following motorists are warned. Plus there's a whole package of electronic assistance acronyms. TCS traction control, EBR engine friction torque control, ASR acceleration skid control and VDC vehicle dynamic control. That last feature regulates oversteer and understeer through the corners. As you might expect, when it comes to the van model, the three sight and body styles really are quite different. The compact version that I've got here really is compact. It's restricted 3.94 meters of length insufficient to accommodate the sliding side doors you get further up the range. If you can stretch to the long version, 4.32 metres in length, it's probably worth doing so, while the 4.7 metre long extra long variant is only about 60 millimetres shorter than an entry level version of Mercedes Vito van from the next segment up. Whichever body length you choose, it's clear that a lot of thought has gone into the design of the Sighton's load bay. All models come as standard with conventionally hinged side opening twin rear doors that can be optionally glazed and can swing through 180 degrees. Now the door aperture here is 1,119 millimetres high and 1,219 millimetres wide, so most of the stuff you'll be looking to get in will probably fit. There is the extra cost alternative of a hatchback like single top hinged rear door, but if you go for that then you're going to have trouble getting a forklift close enough to the back of the vehicle to fully fill the space available. Just as well then that the height of the loading sill from the ground isn't too great. It can be as little as 568 millimetres. Get beyond the rear doors and in this compact model you'll find a 2.4 cubic metre space that's 1,258 millimetres in height and 1,460 millimetres in width, a figure that narrows to 1,219 millimetres between the wheel arches. Still enough for a Euro pallet. The door to bulkhead load space length is 1,369 millimetres. 
These dimensions aren't quite as big as some rivals, but there is the option to take longer items if you get yourself a model with the uh, folding low protector grille and the foldable front passenger seat. And that may negate the need for some to stretch up to the bigger long body length. I reckon most operators are gonna to want to do that though, if only for the extra flexibility that the long body shape provides. After all, you know what it's like. There are always gonna be occasions when you'll need that touch of extra space. And when that happens, you'll be glad of the long variance extra 380 millimeters of body length. Inside the cargo bay, this means that the total load space volume rises to 3.1 cubic meters. So about 30% more room than you get in this compact version. That's thanks to a door to bulk head uh, load space length increase to 1,753 millimeters. Go for an extra long siphon and the cubic capacity is 3.8 cubic meters across a load length of 2,137 millimetres, which could rise as high as 2,886 millimetres with the folding low protector grille and the foldable front passenger seat fitted. The load bay offers limited protection against the inevitable scrapes and dents of everyday working life, but you'd be wise to build on that by specifying a ply lining kit or even the optional wooden floor that also simplifies loading and makes cleaning easier. Synthetic plastic flooring is standard, another thing you pay extra for on some rival models. As you'd expect, there are standard fit load securing rings so that uh, goods can be securely lashed down, four, six or eight, depending on the body length you choose. There's also the option of adding four load securing rings to each sidewall, or even a rail on each sidewall with two movable load securing rings. So, in other words, there's no excuse for not keeping your cargo tied down. If you are careless enough to leave everything loose and it all slides forward, then you'll be glad of the standard full height bulkhead, replaced here by an optional folding load protector grille that, along with an optional folding front passenger seat, facilitates transport of really long items. If that's not enough, then you could always tick the box for a ladder flap in the back of the roof up here or indeed actually carry stuff on the roof. It will, after all, take up to 100 kilograms in weight. An optional rooftop cargo basket is provided for this purpose if you choose the long body length. Even with this compact version, you can fit a set of roof bars up top and then specify a ladder rack. The cargo bay length of the two longer variants means that you won't want to be always using these rear doors. So as usual in this segment, there's the opportunity of loading things in at the side. In fact, from both sides, thanks to the uh, fact that two sliding doors are provided as standard on both those long variants. The aperture of the doors in question offers a reasonable 1,128 millimeters of height, but the 638 millimeters of width isn't quite enough to admit a Euro pallet. If you're planning to make use of all the capacity this sight and range can potentially offer, then you'll want to make the right choices on payload capacity when selecting your ideal model. With this compact body shape, the weight you can carry is restricted to 490 kilograms, but that rises to anything between uh, uh, 590 and 775 kilograms if you go for the long variant, or uh, between 795 kilograms and 810 kilograms for the extra long variants. On to running costs. Mercedes boasts that this vehicle has the performance of a giant and the thirst of a sparrow. Is that borne out by the figures delivered by the Euro 5 engine range? Well, to some extent, yes. Thanks to features like efficient electric power steering, a controlled oil pump, a battery management system, and neat details like aerodynamically shaped windscreen uh, wipers and mirror housings. Fuel economy is curiously actually better if you specify a 90 brake horsepower 109 CDI diesel variant like the one I have here, rather than the entry level 75 brake horsepower 
108 CDI model. And you can boost your black pump returns by around 5%. In either case, by opting for the extra cost blue efficiency pack, which costs £245. So by my calculations, would probably pay for itself after around 35,000 miles. With this, you get an eco stop start setup to cut the engine when you don't need it, say stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Also included are battery and alternator management systems that allow uh, braking energy to be recovered. Plus, you get uh, low rolling resistance tyres. As you'd expect, this all enhances your CO2 reading too. And with the pack in place, a 108 CDI model can average as much as 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out as little as 116 grams per kilometre of CO2. A 109 CDI variant like this can manage as much as 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out as little as 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. Go for the 111 CDI model and the combined cycle fuel figure can be as high as 61.7 miles to the gallon, while the vehicle can put out as little as 119 grams per kilometre of CO2. All of this should give owners a very decent operating range from the 60 litre fuel tank. The petrol engine Siton comes with the blue efficiency tweaks as standard, which help it to a combined cycle return of 46.3 miles to the gallon and a CO2 reading of 140 grams per kilometre. To help owners get somewhere near these kinds of figures on a normal day-to-day -day basis, a shift point display is provided on the dashboard so that drivers can time their gear changes more precisely. Operators wanting to go further can get a factory fitted speed limiter installed or better still specify cruise control with a speed limiter built in. What else? Well, insurance groupings for van models range between 5E and 7E and servicing is required every 25,000 miles or every two years, whichever comes sooner, with garage visits advertised by a useful digital display on the dashboard trip computer. The likely cost of those visits has been kept down too, with careful attention to design detail. Take the tooth belt for driving the camshaft, which has a huge life expectancy of around 150,000 miles. Thanks to the Siton, Mercedes-Benz is now a full range supplier in the van class covering the entire LCV spectrum from urban delivery runabout to large capacity load lugger and dealing with everything from 1.8 tonne to 7.5 tonne permissible vehicle weights. This small model and those that will follow it will transform the brand's fortunes in the commercial segment. A measure of that success would have been achieved even if all the Stuttgart maker had done was to dabble in the kind of badge engineering indulged in by notable rivals. But that isn't the Mercedes way, and sure enough, this Siton is good enough and distinct enough to credibly wear the three-pointed star and justify its premium as a quality choice in the compact van segment. The way it looks, the way it drives, and the way it'll feel to own and use this van are all unique, as will be the impression your business will make in running one. Imagine, say, you're running a gourmet food business or delivering fresh flowers. Like it or not, you're going to create more of an impression of quality arriving in a Mercedes-Benz. Of course, all that would be an irrelevance if the practicalities and economics of this vehicle didn't stack up. Fortunately for the German brand, proven Renault underpinnings and engine wear ensure that they do, though I'd like to have seen the optional blue efficiency engine tweaks installed a stand across the range. It's the only vehicle in its segment to be offered with three different body lengths, and there are key touches you just don't get as standard on many rivals, like twin sliding side doors and stability control that adapts itself to the load you're carrying. It's all very premium, all very Mercedes, and all evidence of how, in most of the ways that really matter, this Siton can really deliver.